I think it was a great uh, discussion and some uh, whatever a good uh, prelude to what uh, we're going to talk about and what it is that we're doing uh, in terms of big data and analytics at GE. And I'll, I'll cover some healthcare examples. But I, I ran into this picture, these, these, these two, and I thought it was very relevant uh, to the discussion that we were talking about, the, the mobilities, right? Look what happened in 2005 and look what's happening in 2013. And we just began. We just began. We talk about data, you're, you're absolutely right. It's not about the size of the data and what you do with the data, right? And we used to get this data, and it was usually an average data, and really meaningless, if you think about it. What does that mean, an average data? Really meaningless. We tried to do something with it. We were very good at it and passionate about it. Things have changed. Look, look what we're getting today. This is one of the uh, uh, just snippet of a data that we capture from a jet engine. And you know, in a single trip, not continental trip, in a single trip, we get terabytes of data off the jet engine. And before the jet lands, we know exactly what needs to happen, when and how, and what we need to inform the pilots about and operations about. We just began talking about it. Now, remember the, 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 the 90s, the, uh, when we started really talking about the internet? It was about consumers. We were just connecting people. I think we've done a team, you know, done a great job, Verizons and everybody. We're talking about one billion. If you look at the machines, that's when we talk about the industrial internet. Talk about connecting 50 billion machines. And it's happening, whether we like it or not. They're getting smarter. I know they're collecting data for, about me all the time. I have my Fitbit and I have my smartwatch and uh, you know, sensor skins and you know, on the skin and it's happening. We have these things. The way that we're actually utilizing the data is gonna change, is gonna change dramatically. I don't think we've seen it yet. The real-time analytics, and everybody talks about analytics. And it's one of those kind of stretchy words. Oh, we do analytics. The, the, for me, the way to really interpret is, what is the question that we're trying to answer? This, those, identifying those high-value questions is key. Otherwise, it's not about charts, it's not about the pie charts, it's not about the, uh, the, you know, the staggered numbers and so forth. And if somehow somebody could develop a software program that reads hundreds of emails that I get within an hour and actually scans it and says, you know, here's the context and here's what you should be focusing on, that's great. Otherwise, sorting them into the senders and so forth is meaningless. I still have to do the sorting. That's what the analysis part of it is. Now, we did talk about, this was a great discussion today and yesterday, changing architecture. We gotta think differently. Industrial software applications, enterprise. We, I, I, am, I live in the world of industry, so it's most of what we do is all about enterprise, all about solving solutions for enterprises. And from end to end, you know, being, uh, you know, looking at the data so that you can actually provide uh, insight into the data to create a consistent and meaningful experience to the users is it's all about this. And it's about the architecture. And I, I love this example. We were just talking about it. Uh, the, it's, the, it's the power of one. Did you know that just in the United States, if you could move the freight, the, the, these trains that you see all the time, that you're stuck and you're cussing all the time, because they're really long. If you could move them, and they, on the average, they move about 20 miles per hour across the nation. If you move them one mile faster, it's $200 million operating profits to them, just to the bottom line. Think about this. And that means, if you look at it, it industry-wise, 27 billion, just from the predicting what's gonna fail, how we should move them, how we should optimize them. In healthcare, it's the largest opportunities. And I'm not talking about using iPhones and iPads and so forth. You know, the, from home care to what you're doing in the hospital to the clinics that we're visiting, the, the tremendous uh, opportunities for us. Just 1% of optimization will give us 63 billion. So we talk about healthcare costs, and maybe we should pay attention to that. 
the, the diagnostics around the power, well, we are only aware when the power goes out. We wonder, if, yo, this, is, this, this shouldn't happen. In, in Canada, if you look at the uh, Quebec uh, Hydra, I believe is the group, they have more technologies trying to, uh, you know, they work with us very closely, trying to understand how they, we can predict which tree is gonna fall and if it is going to really knock down the power line. That's what we do with that. Because when that goes down in the middle of winter, if you haven't been in Canada, it is very hard to go and clean that up. So for us, challenges of the fragmented development. I am the CTO, right? You know, the, as a software CTO for a large organization, this is what we live. And we, we have talents, like thousands of people, and not, not all of them have really grown up. They're not all from uh, Silicon Valley. And, and they are not just really as efficient on HTML5s or ISs and so forth. And yes, we do have fragmented developments. And we gotta deal with it. We can't just throw everything out and, and, and get to it, but it, we have to be aware what it is that we need to do on top of it so that we can figure out a way to optimize our developments. It takes too long, it limits the reuse. And these are all the things that I complain all the time, all the time to my uh, team members. It costs too much, right? If you know it. And we have risk, security risk, we talked about that a lot. So we're doing quite a bit of investment in, uh, in GE. Uh, you know, we started with a lot of partnerships. We're looking at it because there are companies out there who will run faster on their own. And as long as uh, we're partnering with them, we're getting the right things for our needs, that's great. This is, this is why I'm excited to talk to all of you. Maybe I can learn a thing or two from you guys and maybe I can bring more of the goodies uh, to the family. We are expanding, we're really working at it, but we, the, our focus is what is it that we can do? We cannot replace everything in the install base. It's just out there, it will never happen. When anybody comes and says, rip out your know, install base, build this from scratch, it's very tough to do. So here's what we're doing in GE, we're building a platform, this is our platform. So this solves our enterprise solutions and our needs, which was sort of, I really love the comments and the feedback made. This is to, tailored for our needs and it's truly an open uh, infrastructure that we are building it. It enables all GE pillars to really build their industrial uh, enterprise solutions that we need. We look at the asset optimization applications, we look at the operations, uh, optimization, and each of them have their own flavors, but then you have some extensions that is needed for healthcare, and we worry about that and our applications to it. Now, what I like to do is give you some uh, feel for what it has been that we've been working on and how we're creating some solutions very quickly because that, that platform really enables us to spin up some of the solutions a little faster. So let's talk about a little bit briefly about what healthcare is. It's a very large organization. It's like 18 something billion dollars unit of GE. We have 53,000, I think, uh, people of, of those three, uh, 4,000 of them are software engineers. And uh, we spend over a billion on R&D every year. 